for Premier Media's Polity, Amlum Gilengompe. Joining me is Professor Raymond Sadner, here to unpack part two of his Pravin Gordon tribute titled Pravin Gordon, the fight for clean government and his arrogance. You refer to the scapegoating of Pravin Gordon and others under the label of the cabal, but you also refer to a broader history of African and Indian collaboration going back to the 1949 African-Indian violence. Do you think this division can be put to rest? And are there not other elements of the history to draw on? Yes, well, you know, a lot of um, the contention relates to Gandhi, where people say Gandhi was a racist. Now, Gandhi was racist in some of his early statements, but Gandhi grew and he changed. And when the ANC was formed, Gandhi sent a message to the ANC. And when the ANC was having, was in the depths of decline, they sent a delegation to India to see Gandhi. So things changed at the level of Gandhi, a sort of father figure for many Indian people who struggled. After the 1949 conflict between Africans and Indians, as I mentioned, Chief Lutuli and uh, the president of the NIC, Dr. Naika, used to bend all their efforts to bring the two communities together. There's a lot of uh, evidence of Lutuli working closely with Indians. For example, in other things I've written on, on that, Gun, uh, Lutuli was house arrested and the people who secured uh, safe places for him to meet people secretly were two Indian people. For the moment, I can't remember their name. In fact, there's a book about it. But they used to make sure that he was not caught breaking his banning orders. And there's evidence also that Chief Lutuli used to get illegal publications, including the African Communist. And one of the ways this emerged is that the police once found illegal publications in his post box. He said he didn't know how they got there, didn't ask for them to be sent to him, and so forth. So there was this close relationship, but it doesn't remedy problems. If people who are opportunists want to cause trouble, they often uh, refer to Indians as being very rich, not caring about Africans, only ones who benefit from Gordan are Indians and whites and Africans didn't benefit at all. Now, the evidence shows otherwise. And the evidence of the Indian Congresses in the 70s and the 80s also shows otherwise. So we just got to work hard because it's very important not to have these conflicts within the ranks of the oppressed people and their organizations. You, in a private discussion, opposed Pravin Gordon going into the Zuma government, but you never attacked what he did. Is it sufficient to say, having accepted his good faith and that of others in a similar position, you respected it? Well, you know, what is it to help for me to moralize on a puritanical basis about don't go near uh, the Zuma government? It's toxic. It's true that it's toxic, but life goes on and things were being done in the Zuma government. Pravin Gordon and your father worked with Pravin Gordon. They worked in a way that benefited uh, the oppressed, but also that undermined the corruption, uh, tried to undermine the corruption that had seeped so deeply into the ANC-led government. Now, to say that I'm not getting involved is one thing, but to say no one must get involved 
is not helping anyone because these people, disagree, I disagreed with them, but they did what they did in good faith and they achieved some things and some of what they wanted to achieve was thwarted and they were also, their character was assassinated by these EFF people and others. So I believed I didn't come out in support as I did with the uh, GNU, although I think I did sometimes support, I did support what Provin was doing. However, uh, I didn't myself go there uh, and get involved in some, or try to get some position somewhere or other. You relate the loss that Gordon's death represented to the GNU's lack of preparation for a national dialogue. How could he have helped? Well, let's first say whether whether it's correct to say that the GNU has proclaimed one of its key goals to have a national dialogue. Now, what has it done about that? It's made pronouncements and announcements, but it's done no organization for that. Now, the way we used to work in the 1980s was everything depended on organization. If we wanted to have a national convention or a national dialogue, we would set about consulting all over the country. The model we had was of the Congress of the People, which was not a single event in Cliptown in 1955, but it was a lot of preparation over time. Now, the ANC section of the GNU should be infusing the GNU with the need to do this in the areas where they work. But there's no evidence that this is being done. Now, Pravin, if he wanted to play a role in the period of his retirement, could have offered his services and probably would have offered his services in training ANC people as organizers and political education people. And that, I think, is what he could have done and would have done. But others should pick up that spear. You know, the nostalgia that I referred to, I think, is people are looking back to a time when the ANC was a vibrant organization with lots of debate. So the GNU, the ANC component of it, is not encouraging that. Some of the speeches in commemorating Comrade Pravin were very substantial, but some of them were empty because the character of politics today is devoid of debate. And it's uh, talking down to people, reprimanding them, or uh, just using phrases like we will never retreat on this, that, and the other. Nothing substantial. Pravin was completely substantial. What he did, you could see why and what it was meant to achieve. There was a line of march. And line of march was not just a cliche. It had steps that you had to follow. That was Professor Raymond Sutner discussing his tribute to Pravin Gordon.